Okay, so I'm going to make a statement here that might be a bit bold, um, but I've, I've used Photoshop and Lightroom for my photos when I'm busy doing shoots. Um, and I've used that workflow for many years. Um, I'm now using Affinity's photo for photo manipulation or, you know, removing backgrounds for tweaking things as such. And I use Affinity's designer for vector art and it's got a pixel uh, editor inside it also. But that's for another day to discuss that. There are some videos out to explain that. And then the publisher one, which is probably the equivalent of InDesign. But there's always been this missing gap of a Lightroom version. So I did a video previously um, on this channel explaining uh, probably a lot of different options, but there's tons of options out there for Lightroom replacements. But my point is not coming to see whether uh, Lumina, uh, specifically Lumina 4, is your Lightroom replacement. I want to approach it a bit differently. I want to let you look at it as whether this is a tool in which you can do all your photo manipulations as a photographer from you know cleaning up the photo from cropping to content aware editing or what they refer to in some programs as in painting so you can clean up the photo you can then process the photo put it in catalogs put it in albums do bulk processing have presets attached to them the the kind of photoshop lightroom integration that's been around whether this program luminar is going to be able to do all of that and my uh, word up front is yes it can do that plus lots more this the software is built really uh, into the future and and may i just mention here uh, you know you have the programs like the adobe suite and that they've been around for ages and they've been leaders in this field but also they have a lot of legacy um, things in it so the menus are all convoluted it's stuck all over so programs or companies like serif and skylum who's now made uh, lumina um, these guys are building their software with user interfaces that is that it's so modern it uses machine language and all that sort of stuff for the integration so i, I want you to have a kind of a a unbiased look at what the software can offer because I believe you can use this software as a photographer for work from start to finish. Of course if you're trying to you know go and go cut out this image and place this image somewhere else then yes go use uh, Affinity Photo or Photoshop to do that because that's actual photo manipulation. We're talking about photographic um, processing that is about color balance, contrast, about bringing out detail, etc., and uh, tweaking things as far as the lighting goes. And, and one big part of that is sky replacements. Like if you look at this particular shoot, I'll just open one of these images. This sky, uh, we took this photo on a day when the sky was filled with uh, sort of dense gray clouds and there wasn't any direct sunlight, which is brilliant for photography because you don't have any massive art shadows. But when you're done with it, you want to make the, the shoot a bit more entertaining, having a more interesting sky. So even though we could, uh, we shot in RAW and we could pull back what the sky looked like on the day, it's not that entertaining to look at it, just a normal gray sky. So what a lot of guys are doing is they learning to mask out the sky and drop in and a, another sky is another layer and then blend it in just to add interest to it. So that is part of our normal photography uh, you know, specifically even with landscapes, with cityscapes and with portrait work, that's kind of what you do quite often just to make the, the visual more entertaining. So when we're looking now at Luminar, uh, Luminar 4, uh, what is it giving to us that we, we don't already have? And this is the kind of thing that I want to touch on now. I'm going to go into probably one or two or probably a bit more specifics about some of the features like layers and all of that in the thing so that you can see the power that we have in there. But let me just try and get your interest uh, poked over here. Now normally what you do in an image like this, um, none of these images have been processed yet, but if I wanted to do a more interesting cloud over here, I would have had to go, go through into Photoshop, go mask out this area, drop an image on a layer, sort of distort it so that I can get the thing you know, blending in effectively. Look at what Luminar is able of doing. Now, 
I'll, I'll come to explain how we're going to build it in, but let me just show you a one-click um, solution for this. And here again, when I say one-click solution, I know a lot of photographers are going like, hey, lead me to a blank page and I will start a, from the first slider to add my, my adjustments to it. Don't give me these presets or whatever it is. But more and more photographers are starting to use presets in your Lightroom environment. Here, it's referred to as looks. Okay, so you see this here, it says looks. I'm going to just go here as a, a library here. So I'm going to pull up, let's say it is, yeah, lifestyle. So here's a whole lot of looks that come in here. And these are literally presets of all of these settings that we have here, different settings, and they saved as presets there. Okay, but they're a bit more powerful than normal presets. Okay, let's get back to this image. Um, this is just to get you interested in sticking around a bit longer to see what this is all about. So if I go to AI sky replacement, I saw a guy on his channel talking about, you know, now it's not AI because not artificial intelligence, it's machine learning. Okay, what, whatever you want to call it, we're going to, for future purpose, reference it as artificial intelligence because it's just machine learning. And, and may I say to the photographers out there, we are all using machine learning every day that we take a snap with our camera. Because when we point a camera in a direction, the camera is busy calculating contrast values and then it gives us a suggested uh, exposure. So we've put the camera on aut fully automatic, it will do the calculation of the correct exposure for areas. So that is, that's machine learning. It's, it's just using it with the later mirrorless cameras. It's able to take the image that it's seeing, seeing that it's a human face and seeing that the background is exposed. It's been able to do multiple exposures uh, for those different areas. So all we're doing now is bringing that sort of uh, holy grail, if I can call it, into software. Because we could tell the software, listen here, this is an image. The software would have seen millions or the developers would have put the process through on millions and millions of photos. So how many photos do you have you taken that you've had a sky like this or a sky area, a, a foliage area and a human being in it? So we leave it up to the computer to determine that these are independent parts. And instead of us masking it out, let's ask the computer to do it automatically. And this is what um, Lumina does. So. We're coming to the AI replacement. It's just, it's doing the multiple calculations. And that's why sometimes it takes a little while to, to process because it's, it's busy analyzing every image. So if we go uh, sky selection, let's put in maybe a blue sky and just look at this. One click and there we have a blue sky. Isn't that incredible? Now, of course, um, the sky goes in. If we zoom in, you can see that it's, that might have a bit of a halo effect there. Um, so in some cases, it might not just with a one click work perfectly. Then we've got to do a bit of um, adjustments here. And this is what the adjustments are for. Maybe horizontal, not horizontal, horizon blending. We can create a bit of blend so it will blur in that area. If the thing is too sharp, we can come to the advanced settings. Oh, by the way, I like this advanced settings. It's part of the settings, but they tuck it away so that you don't, when you open up one of these uh, adjustment areas, it doesn't like scroll all the way down. You then can commit to opening it further and scrolling down and then collapsing that. So the UI is really, really sweet. So if I wanted to now go and say this is a bit too sharp in under advanced settings, you can see there's lots of settings, but for example, sky defocus, we maybe pull it up a bit like that just to bring a bit of um, defocus on the sky so it's not that sharp because the image, the depth of field creates a bit of blur towards the outside there. And then we can create atmospheric haze and a whole lot of other stuff. So there's key areas here that is specific to that sky. But just to the point that I wanted to mention, look at this. You now have the ability to drop in with a single click button, the ability to drop in a sky without doing any masking along the way. And if you choose to want to add additional masking on every one of these adjustment layers, you just click this open and collapse this, there's a mask. So you can click on the mask and you can paint in an area or erase an area. And this mask literally is either allowing the sky area to show through or you can remove the sky area based on the mask. So depending on which adjustment you're busy with, each of them have their own 
uh, masks that you can apply to them. So you can add um, a specific adjustment just to a small spot on a, on a photograph or to the entire thing, etc. Okay, but let me show you here with another click of a button. Let's go to a dramatic sky. And there we have it. Isn't that incredible? And here's the other thing also with changing the sky. It's not just doing an automatic mask and putting it in there. It's taking the actual hue and saturation and all the settings of the actual clouds and placing it on the foliage and the object that's in the environment. And the reason for doing that is that if you're in an area and there's a saturated sky, a blue sky, you can't have that blue not bleeding into the area. But you also have the ability to clear it off if you choose not to use it. Either if you click on the mask, you can brush it off or you can create a gradient mask and move it up. Uh, for those who use um, uh, Lightroom, you know, that was the initial mask that they always used to give you this gradient mask. So you could put it on where it masks off the effect of the cloud bleeding off into the rest of the image. So there's so many different uh, manipulating features, but this is just to show you that just with one click, you are able to drop in a sky, you're able to, let's go into a sunset sky, and there we have it. Isn't that incredible? Okay, so you could also go in and go put sun rays, and you'll be able to create rays, etc., etc. So these settings here are, are literally pieces of adjustments that are just not global adjustments. They don't just throw it onto the image. They measure what the objects are using this intelligence and applying it uh, equally. I'll just show you this other one here. If you go, we have AI structure, AI enhance. So AI structure will do the same enhancements on the image, but it will identify that there's human skin and human body. That would not be changed as much as the foliage would be changed or the sky would be changed. Uh, like here, you could go for landscape enhancer. I can go dehazer. You can see it just applies it on the landscape itself. It doesn't affect directly onto the human skin here. Although it does change the effect over here because if it does get darker here and that's human skin, it will have a bit of modification. So it doesn't leave the human skin like standing, you know, perfectly still. It has an effect on these areas and it's, it's really awesome when you do close analysis of it. And like I said, if, if, it, if it puts too much of the effect on there, on, for example, landscape and answer, you just click the masking tool and you mask out some of the effect on that area. Or you can pull back the overall effect on that by another slider. If you go to the layers slider here, you can actually pull that all that effects back out there. So this is a global pulling out of it. Okay. So that hopefully that gets you excited about the the intelligence that's in here. Guys who are, like I said, the pro photographers don't want this one-click business because they, they kind of feel, now this is Instagram, you know, they want Instagram filters that just gets popped on. But I, I think you need to just be a bit open-minded because to get to these settings as a professional photographer might take you half an hour, hour to mask out things, create all this. And if you're allowing the machine to do the, the work, which, of course, the camera, when we take a snap, is already doing quite a bit of the intelligent work, why not bring it into the editing suite? So here, yeah, pretty much, we, we've done what we would have done in Photoshop to go mask this area in and drop it in and then to add some Gaussian blur and all that. All of that was done here yeah, just with a click of a button and a few tweaks if we wanted to modify it. Okay, so... I have these tweaks on here now, but I want to show you that this is a layers palette over here. Next to it is a canvas. Down here is what I'm going to refer to as personas. I don't think um, Skylum calls it personas or Lumina calls it personas, but because I've been using the affinity range where they have pixel persona and design personas, I think it's a good naming nomenclature to give to it. So. These personas here are, when you click on them, they have specific editable features in them that relates to essentials that we need to modify. So as you click the one, it will pop open with many adjustments. And of course, advanced adjustments uh, will still show up there and we can collapse that. Okay, so those four personas will deal with specific workflows. And I'll briefly cover uh, what they targeted at for purposes of photography. 
Okay, so we've got this image over here. So I'm going to, instead of not using that image there, now I can maybe take another one, or before I even go that far. You know, there's so many features. I, I, one just doesn't want to stop uh, showing the features all over and over. But I want to try and keep focus on getting to sell you the idea of the all-encompassing editing suite um, and image manipulation suite that Luminar is. So if I have this image here and I got this image now, uh, if we look at this here, there's a sky, there's the green area at the back, the person in here. If I wanted to drop that sky in here, I would have had to go mask there again. But look at this here. I can come here, right click on it, and I'll say copy this adjustment. I come to this next photo and I can right click and I'll say paste this adjustment. Now, normally we can paste adjustments from one thing to the other, but it's just the adjustment. But look at this. When I paste this, it's able to paste also the detection of the sky and put it in there. Just look at this. This is awesome. And this should excite you as a photographer because now you can do bulk processing and push across all the sky changes that you want across the different photos. And, and this, is, this can save you hours and hours of long work. And then, of course, once you have this, you can tweak the rest of the image like you want to. Okay, so let's say we've got this image now. Um, I'm going to just choose a different image. Uh, let's or maybe just pull this out here. Uh, let's okay. Let's do this one. This one here's got sort of nice sort of dark shadow areas over there. So if this was the work you had to do now, I showed you how we could do those adjustments on the images. This area at the bottom have these looks, which is just basically presets that is can be thrown on this area. But look at what we're going to do with these layers now. If we choose a layer and I use this preset, it's going to throw that preset on this layer. Okay. But if I want to use any other preset over the one that I'm choosing, this one is going to be replaced by the other one, which is how Lightroom works or how it worked when I used it. So if I go here to Beautiful Sunset, immediately there's an excellent place to start from. So if, I wanted, if I'm happy with this and I just want to tweak a bit, bring out a bit of the shadows a bit more, um, usually you ask yourself, which of these things have been added here? Which of these personas or adjustments have been added? Then all you do is you can go and click through the adjustment. You, when you click there, you can see that of the essentials, AI Enhance and Landscape Enhancer, they were modified. The rest of them aren't contributing to this image in the same way. The creative, there's nothing over here. Uh, under the portrait, nothing. Under pro, color enhancer was added. So if I look under color enhancer, these things were modified here to give this look, this preset look to give its effect. So I can tweak it here if I wanted to do that. Okay, so I can go and modify that now. But if I'm happy with that, but I want to add this looks feel, just about 10% of that looks feel to this. If I click on here, I'm literally going to take that first look totally away. And I've lost everything there. And all these readjust to this particular look, which is something I'm going to just click back here, which is something which, um, like I said, I'm not sure if Lightroom has a solution for it or whether you must just tweak the same sliders. But here you can go, we can go into the layers area. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come here. Or maybe I can even go down here at the bottom and just say reset adjustments. OK, so I'm going to take it down to its original. It's got nothing attached to it. I can go to the layers here, click. And it's got three types of layers I can add. Create stamped layer. This just means that if you've got multiple layers of adjustments and you want to uh, merge all of them into a single layer so that you can do a modification on that one single layer, then you create a stamped layer. It will merge all of this, those image, um, layers. But it doesn't throw those layers away, keeps it there, and it just creates one stamped layer. So the stamped layer is like kind of a, a single flattened layer of everything else below it. The add new image layer, that explains what it is. You can drop another image on here and then create a, a blend between the two images. Because every adjustment layer has a blend 
uh, ability you can go and do overlay and everything or you could add texture onto it if it's a, a different image you're working with okay so that's there but this is the one that I, I want to just highlight it's an adjustment layer so if we click in there and we put in adjustment layer it comes in there what I can do now is go to beautiful sunset I can click on that and it takes this look this all these adjustment looks that we're seeing here it places it on this adjustment layer so I can literally call this let me call this uh, sunset so it's placed all of those settings that we've pulled out of these kind of if I call them four personas it's put it onto that sunset layer if I disable that now then it's gone it's back to its normal so it's only showing the image here but if I switch that on it's there if I want to tweak anything in this particular look I can come to these here yeah, again like I showed you just now if I go in essentials those two have brought it in and we know that pro the color enhancer has added value here so I could go in here and go and tweak this if I wanted to but I'll leave it as it is at the moment if I go back to layers if I want to add now um, a bit of say exposure maybe a quarter of exposure to this image I could add it to this adjustment layer I could come here to the essentials go to light and then add a bit more exposure but then that would be locked into this sunset adjustment it would become part of this modification so what we can do is just add another adjustment layer now it's a brand new adjustment layer and if I switch this off it does nothing to the image because there's nothing on it here now okay but onto this because I've selected it now I can go do a modification in any of these four areas so I'm going to go here and I'm going to just pop up the exposure okay now I'm just doing this excessively just to show you the point uh, let me just click in there and I'm going to put it up as one stop okay I I thought I was going to press one stop, but if you press um, tab it does a nice full screen for you okay so now I've added that exposure onto this area and here again if I choose to only have that exposure applied to the model over here I can create editor mask and I can paint only on this area then the whole background area will go a bit darker so maybe I should just show you that go to edit mask and I have different types of edits that I can create from radial gradient luminosity mask but I'm going to choose the brush so square bracket same thing works here when you left square bracket to size it smaller etc so here we have the options uh, this means to paint in so this means paint in what the adjustment layer is doing erase would mean that if I did that there then the rest of the image would have the adjustment effect but I'll erase it from wherever I'm erasing but this one I want to have paint and I am going to paint it in uh, yeah let's keep it at 50 and then I can slowly introduce it here okay if I click mask here now you're going to see nothing because there's no mask but I'll leave that mask or maybe let me switch it off I'm going to just draw one area here and then switch the mask on and you'll see the mask so I'm in paint mode when I draw the area here it's going to start masking the rest of the area will all go back to the one stop before this okay so if I draw down here let go it will process it and it will drop it all back okay if I go to the mask you can see there so I can get onto this area just draw the mask onto her and her here so what I'm drawing on here I'm going to let go of the mouse and then start again so it will add it was 50% opacity so now it will go to a much higher opacity so what I'm doing is here I'm drawing on this adjustment layer which is a one-stop exposure so the rest of the background now is at the exposure before I made this alteration on this particular layer if I switch the mask off there we can see we've got it okay so if I go now and let me just push this up okay and I'm going to go to that adjustment layer so I've put that on the adjustment layer if I disable it you'll see there it all changes okay now you, you can see that there's maybe a bit of over exaggeration on the sides but the point I want to get to is that you are able to do that kind of general adjustment 
Okay, so I'm going to go in here. Let me see if I can reset this adjustment. Can I do it? Um, let me let me just go and delete this adjustment, and I'll put in a, a new one. Uh, delete this adjustment, and I'm going to add a new adjustment layer in. Come in here and just put this up at one stop. Okay, so now I'm getting the whole image back. So that was just to show you how you could do a masking over there. Okay, so let's go to the layers and I have this adjustment layer and I'm going to just go in here and rename it as exposure, say, plus one. So I know what I did on that layer. Now, here's the other thing. I can, like I said, mask it out or I could change the blend mode of whatever the adjustment is. I can go through all of these blend modes and alter them to make them function differently. So normal blending you can add in per adjustment layer. Okay, so if I'm happy with that, maybe I want to do something with a skin over here. Um, I can go in and add another layer over the adjustment layer. Then on this adjustment layer, let me go to the portrait mode. And then I'm going to go to portrait enhancer. Okay, and now this, uh, this is to add light to the face. Now, for those of you who work with Portrait Pro, which is uh, Anastropic, I think that's the company, they make Portrait Pro, which is there to define what the face is and, you know, add makeup and all that and do that modeling uh, kind of look. This program, besides its fact that it's using artificial intelligence all over, has the ability and it includes the ability to also add enhancements to the portrait from skin smoothing. But if we had to do a face lighting, look at this here, it's detecting only the face that it's bringing the lighting in. So I could go there and take that up into the area I want to. Um, I could go into enhancing the, the eyes. Can you see there it's lighting the eyes? And the nice thing about this, it doesn't become excessive. It doesn't like overbearingly add enhance on the eyes that starts to make the thing like an alien. It literally understands that this is human eye and this is the scope of the human eye. So, you know, you can move it to 100% and then pull it back depending on what you want to do. Um, eye whitening, same thing. You can put it up there. You'll see it. It whitens the eyes. So all of this is without masking. So this is almost doing what Portrait Pro does for, for the image. Slim the face, enlarge the eyes. Let's go enlarge the eyes. Look at that. Beautiful. It's really incredible. Then, of course, lip saturation. Yeah, we're not adding on makeup and all like Portrait Pro, but you can do that and brush that on in separate uh, other adjustment layers. Okay, so, so we have this area to do these modifications. If we go to Skin Enhancement, we can, let's just zoom in, we can go to AI Skin Defects Removal. Okay, so if we click in there, it automatically is analyzing the human skin and removing any defects that are there. Now, there are natural sort of skin blemishes and that sort of thing. It doesn't interfere with that. It's If it is an excessive defect, it will uh, alter that. So we can go in here and just watch what happens. This is the slider for the amount. So we're now enabling the AI can you see what's happening there? It's, it's creating a beautiful soft texture. But if we look closer, let this just clear. Um, it's busy processing. You can still see that there's all the skin pores and everything. So it's incredible in preserving the, the naturalness of the human skin. And then if we feel that it's maybe overdoing a job in an area, we can use the mask to paint it in or paint it out again. Okay, so... This is skin enhancement, and this we all add now on this layer. So if I disable this, you'll see that the lightness will go off there and the smoothing of the skin. Okay. If I feel, okay, that is fine, but I want to pull that whole effect, the smoothing and the lighting a bit back. On the adjustment layer, I can just do a bit of modification. Maybe say I only want 55% of that lightening and that smoothing together pulled back. Okay, now the other thing that I just wanted to show you before I close off is if you look at these layers, now if you do say 10 adjustment layers, when you want to come look at the bottom one, then you've got to kind of switch off all 10 of them. Yeah, if you click on the bottom one, you're going to automatically switch the others off and it will only show you this one. Look at this. 
click there. Now I'm only busy on this one. If I click higher, it includes these two. If I click higher, it includes those three. Okay, so it's wherever you click, it will switch the one off above it. And I think that is phenomenal for workflow because it speeds it up. You don't have to disable, disable, disable. Because when you click on a specific adjustment layer, I'm sure you want to do some settings on that adjustment layer. If you want to, you can move this into a priority. You can take this one and move it up to the top area. So sunset is on top and then these ones are at the bottom and you can always flip them around. Okay, you can switch that back on and that back on. Okay, but they will have a different kind of process if you have the adjustment layers laying differently. Okay, so that, that's how it's created there. You're able now to work with that. Just this uh, next one here is if you want to crop, rotate, or you want to edit something out of the image, uh, you have an eraser tool, which is a content aware eraser, or if you want to call it in painting eraser, that's able to do that, and a clone stamp. So all of that, these three things, when you use them, they immediately create their separate adjustment layer. They create a separate adjustment layer. So everything you do in this program is non-destructive. I can always come back and switch these things off and I'll have the original back to where I was. Um, that's why I suggest when, when people do this uh, in photography and you're using these layers or you're using adjustments, do every new uh, key adjustment on a new adjustment layer so that you have the control of it afterwards. And then you could blend it in or mask it out or mask it back in accordingly. So if I keep there, that's the before, that's the after. Or I can click on there and just zoom in, pull that down. So that is the before and that's the after. Okay, I think that's really, really awesome. And there you have the ability to catalog everything, libraries, albums, everything, export. You're able to give it star ratings, color ratings, favorites. Everything that you're familiar with in Lightroom can be done here. And you have artificial intelligence and you have the abilities to, to edit, um, working with masks on every adjustment layer, being able to paint in masks, remove. It is quite incredible. So as a photographer, I hope you, you see something in this and you get excited about it. I literally have taken the photo editing, the Lightroom and artificial intelligence, put them all into a box, gave it a good shake. And for me, what came out at the other side was Lumina 4. And I hope that you'll give it a try, start to learn how to use the tool. It's, it's very intuitive. Uh, it will take you as a photographer probably a half a day, if not shorter, to get your hands around working with all this stuff, watching one or two videos, and you'll be A for away. So uh, I'm, I'm on a mission to get as many photographers using the software, um, because I think the more people use it, the more the company will be able to get good feedback and be able to keep on developing, um, especially the AI sections of it. I haven't even covered the AI um, details, these, these ones here, the, let me just go to it. It's called AI Enhanced AI Structure. Maybe I should just do AI Structure and show you here. Okay, what AI Structure does is it goes and it checks what is the human body and what other things are around, what is different around here. And it will optimize the foliage as foliage. It will optimize the human skin as human skin. It doesn't just add a an effect over it. And that's the big difference between this and maybe what you find on a small app on your phone that just throws in a generalized uh, sort of, and it calls it artificial intelligence. But this is what we have and that's what we get in the process. Okay, and this is with a few tweaks. I, I didn't even do it for the purpose of getting the image great. All I'm doing is to show the features and in the process we, we're getting great results. I mean, we can I mean, still a lot to do with, uh, you know, contrast and color tones and that sort of thing. But hopefully you get excited as a photographer and your portrait work, whether it's indoor, outdoor, your landscape shooting, your, especially with um, real estate, you can get some awesome uh, edits specifically with the AI structure. It just does a lot for your, your buildings and so forth to make them pop. I'll see you at the other side when 
uh, do a couple of more tutorials on specifics. So have a fantastic day and God bless you.